In this video, I'll show you how I made my Mars style bases. Hello everyone and welcome to another brushstroke basing guide. So as those of you who follow the channel will know I've been painting up some Horus Heresy miniatures recently and there's been quite a bit of interest in the uh, Mars sort of red desert basing I've been using for them so I thought I'd make a quick video and show you how to make them. Now you'll be pleased to know they're really quick and simple to make but before we get into that I just want to do my usual thank you to everybody who has supported and subscribed to the channel so far. If you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet then please 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 hit that subscribe button now and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that it'll tell you whenever I post another video. Uh, so with that said and hopefully you've clicked that button uh, we can get on and make some bases. And the first thing you're obviously going to need is a base. Now this is a standard Games Workshop 32mm base from the Horus Heresy box set. Um, and just for ease of use, I've blue tacked it to the top of this cork just so it makes it easier to handle. Um, it's prepared by just giving it a light sand and a wash to get rid of any release agent. And now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of blue slate uh, and super glue that to the top. As you can see, I've been pretty generous with the super glue to make sure that I get a really good strong bond with the rock to the base. Um, the reason I use blue slate is that it looks very realistic in terms of a scale rock. Um, it's actually quite soft, so you can drill it if you need to pin your models to it. And it's very easy to make uh, pieces any size you want because larger pieces can easily be broken into smaller ones with just the, uh, the bash of a hammer. Right, okay, so that super glue is now fully set and that rock's going nowhere. So now I'm going to try and give the impression that that rock is set and buried in some sand. And to do this, I'm going to sculpt down the sides using some wall filler. Um, I believe in the US you guys call it spackle. Now this stuff is really easy to use. Uh, let me just get it open so I can show you what it looks like. It's basically like a white paste. Um, but the important thing is you need to keep it wet while you're working with it. So I've got some water here and then I'm going to use a sculpting tool. Now to start off with, I'm just going to make sure my sculpting tool is wet. And then I'm going to take some out of the tub and I can show you how it's going to work. So I'm just going to place some on the back of my hand that I can work with to make sure I keep the moisture level right. And then start adding it to my base. Just going to get a little bit more water onto my tool there just to work it into the filler on my hand just to soften it down and make it easier to work with and then when i'm happy that that's um, nice and soft then i can just take some and start adding it to my base so i'm just going to start off by getting a fair amount um, onto the base itself and then i can start reducing it down and sculpting it to the shape that i need um, it's still a little bit sticky on the back of the hand, I should probably add a little bit more water. Um, but it's fine, I can just take all of this and start sculpting as we go. So to start with, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to press this filler into the gap between the rock and the base. Um, you can clean off the edge as you go using your finger just to make sure you get that nice sharp clean edge. And then keeping the sculpting tool nice and wet, you can start to work the filler into the shape that you need. In this particular case, we're going for sort of ripples of sand. So I'm going to use a gliding motion from left to right just to slowly and uh, softly indent the, the filler just to give that slight impression of ripples. Now the trick here really is not to press hard, in fact actually you barely touch it at all and it gently adds that ripple to the surface. Okay so with the ripples done on that side let's check out the other side and there's nothing really to sculpt on this, it's just a case of just filling these gaps with the filler just so that you don't have any ugly holes when the base is finished. Then use your finger just to clean off that edge and keep everything nice and neat. And now as a finishing touch, what base for Horus Heresy would be complete without its obligatory skull? So uh, it's got a little skull piece here, I think it's a Games Workshop one. And because the filler is still wet, I'm just going to press it in and then just sculpt the sand around it just to uh, make it look like it's settled. Now it's just a case of letting the filler dry fully. Um, I'm going to leave this overnight to be sure. And once that filler is dry, it'll be more than strong enough to hold the skull in place. So I'll be back once this is dry. 
the fillet is now fully dry and rock solid so it's ready to prime and I'm going to prime this particular base with two primers. I'm going to use Vallejo surface primer in black all over and then I'm going to do a zenithal prime with um, Vallejo surface primer in grey. So with the base now primed, it's ready for adding some paint. Now I'm going to make a bit of change here. In addition to naming the colours, I'm also going to indicate which paintbrush I'm using. And this is because people have asked a lot. So we're going to start off with a base coat of Squig Orange from Games Workshop. And the brush I'm going to use is an Artist Opus Series S brush, size 4. So really simple step to start off with. Um, I've added a little bit of water on my palette to the squig orange to help it flow cleanly and smoothly and I'm going to apply a couple of coats to make sure I get a nice solid finish. Now the aim here isn't to be particularly neat because the only detail you need to avoid is the skull uh, but the aim is to try and be as smooth and clean as possible with your paint. So take your time, make sure you work it into all those little nooks and crannies and make sure you build it up to a solid colour using multiple coats. So now I've got that nice orange base applied, it's time to apply an all over wash and for this I'm going to use Karaberg Crimson from Games Workshop and I'm going to stick with my size 4 brush. Again this is a really simple step, you just need to take your time, I'm applying it neat straight from the pot and the purpose is to encourage the shade wash to um, settle into all of the creases and the recesses of the rock and that will add extra shadow and definition when it dries. Um, because we're using a shade, it does take a little bit longer to dry than a normal paint, so I would recommend leaving it at least 20 to 30 minutes and make sure it's fully dry before moving on to the next stage. So with that wash now fully dry, I'm now going to paint in the skull and make it look a bit more aged. And for this, I'm going to use a coat of Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint from Games Workshop. And for a little bit more control, I'm going to step down to a size 1 brush. This is exactly the same process as using the shade wash. I'm going to apply it all over the skull straight from the pot. I'm going to do a single coat and I'm going to encourage it to settle into all of those creases and recesses. And that'll add some nice depth and shadow, but also tint the skull so it looks nice and aged. And just as with the wash, make sure it is fully dry before moving on to the next stage. And that next stage is going to be a series of different dry brushing. So I'm going to change now to using a medium size Artist Opus Series D brush. And the first color we're going to dry brush with is Bestigore Flesh from Games Workshop. Now dry brushing is a very simple but effective technique. Um, if you've never done it before what you do is you add a little bit of paint into your brush and then on some tissue paper you work off the excess by brushing it back and forth so there's actually very little remaining in the bristles. And then by using a fast flicking motion across the surface of the object it will pick out all of those raised areas and details um, and bring some highlight. So all I'm doing is flicking it very fast and very lightly across the surface of the rock and it's bringing out all of these edges um, and leaving the shadows in the recesses. So just work your way around the whole of the base bringing out that lovely texture. Moving on now I'm going to do another dry brush, this time it's with a weathering powder from Cromlech and it's called Red Rust. Now if you're not familiar with using weathering powders before, don't worry, we're going to use this in exactly the same way as we just did the Bestigore Flesh. So I've added a tiny bit into the brush, removed the excess on some tissue first, and then I'm just using the same dry brushing action to pick out details. I'm going to focus it more in the crevices and the grooves just to darken off those areas. Um, the reason for using a weathering powder is because it actually gives a much softer, drier looking result. So it can give a sort of sandy, um, dry effect and it gives a really nice smooth, soft transition to all of those, uh, those colours and transitions. So switching colour again, I'm going to dry brush now with a different weathering powder and this one is Orange Rust again from Cromlech. So for this final dry brush, I'm just going to try and focus it onto the uh, the top most surfaces, uh, maybe pick out a few of these edges on the side and stuff as well, um, really just to add a bit of variation and a little bit of highlight just to add some interest. Now you will have noticed that dry brushing with these weathering powders can be a bit of a messy process, so do put paper down before you start. Um, and when you're happy with the final result, you're going to want to make sure that you seal them so they don't just rub off. And for this you're going to need to use a rattle can varnish, um, and you just do a very light coating and that should just be enough to make them stick. 
Okay then, so that's my weathering powder done and I've applied that varnish just to keep it in place. So now I'm just going to finish off by doing a light dry brush to the skull and for this I'm going to use some Screaming Skull from Games Workshop. So with that skull now highlighted, the base is all but complete. And all that remains to be done is to paint in the rim. And for this, I'm gonna switch back to my size four brush and paint it in using some Abaddon Black from Games Workshop. And with the rim painted, the base is complete. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful. Um, if you have, then please do click that like button and drop a comment below. If you'd like to see more of these videos, then please let me know in those comments and let me know what you'd like to see. As I mentioned at the start, it's only the support of you guys which makes this channel possible. So if you have enjoyed this video, then please do hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell so you'll know whenever I post another video. And as a final note, please do check out the description below because I'm going to list out all of the products that I've used in this video, uh, along with some links of where you can get them, often at discount prices, so definitely worth checking out. Which leaves me now just to say thank you again for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you again in the next video very soon.